Hey everybody, it's Andrea here at VW Family Farm. So I wanna give y'all some garden updates today and just kinda of tell you what worked and what didn't here on our farm, clean some things up and just hang out a bit. We are trying our best to salvage these sweet potatoes. You can see they're doing pretty good. We got this area cleaned up. There's some little ones like this one we're trying to avoid hitting. We have, it's called nut grass. We have it so bad. So we're just going down through here trying to salvage them. You can see on down there, I still got a bit of work to do. I'm gonna knock it out before it gets dark on me. And there's a few things in the garden I want to show you guys too. So earlier we did not get all the sweet potatoes cleaned up. So I've come back out here, it's almost dark now, and finished them up. I wound up, I didn't do them as well as we did the front of the row because they're tiny and they're still growing and I didn't want to hit any. So a little grass sometimes, you gotta let the grass grow to let the plants get a start. And then when you can find your plants, then you can start really pulling grass. Um, but you're never gonna get all the grass pulled and that's one thing I wanna encourage you guys about. Um, you're never gonna have a perfect year of gardening. You're never gonna get all the weeds pulled. You just gotta enjoy the journey with those things there too. So we had a fantastic year at some things and are still having it at things like tomatoes. Those are massive tomato plants. Um, and we have battled hornworms, we've battled army worms, we've battled really dry conditions there for a while. It's just, we got some things going on, but all in all, it has, they've battled through it and they are still super loaded. You can see there is tomatoes everywhere. I've put up quite a few, don't look too close. You can see some curling leaves and some yellow and some brown. That right there is the biggest culprit I've had to my tomatoes this year. The ducks, they are not afraid of us at 
all. And in fact, when I'm out here working in the garden, they come in here, they take bites of tomatoes and sling their heads around, sling tomato everywhere. Um, I could do something about it, but I have so many tomatoes that I'm just letting them have some of them too. So we're sharing the tomatoes. And while we're on the topic of tomatoes, I wanted to tell you guys my favorite one for 2021. These right here have been the rock stars of this season. You can see they've got some curling leaves and things, but they have made, that's a small one. They have made big ones and small ones, and all of them are just about perfect. They, will, they won't have any cracks on them, any disease, anything. Even when the other plants have had cracking or discoloring, they will ripen and turn red. They look just like the picture perfect market tomato. Definitely, definitely, definitely second place is the big beef. Uh, you can see these are what the ducks are biting on. And then the bees come in here and feed on them. Cycle of life, huh? But these beauties, they have turned out pretty much perfect as well. That one's got a couple spots on it. But for the most part, here's one down here. They turn out just flawless. So big beef is definitely right up there. It may be tied, if not at second place. Next in line, I would probably say are these Abe Lincolns. That's one that's just turning. I just picked these not too long ago, so um, they're still just turning. And then there is these big daddies. They are enormous. You can tell I did not trim around the bottom this year. I tried a different method. I, I did that last year and I, I didn't really like it, to be honest. Um, it didn't turn out as well. These things are easily eight foot tall and they are still very loaded. Those are one of our all time favorites. They just always do good for us. They're called the German Pink. See if I can find you one that's right because like I said, I just recently picked these. I don't see any, but these get really, really large. I'm trying to find you one. There's one down there. If you can see it kind of in the middle there. They get really, really big when they're ripe. That was not quite ripe. And I like a vine ripened tomato, so I'm not gonna pick it. But you can see, they've got some yellowing leaves and different things. At this point in the year, I'm not too concerned about it. And then our old standby, all time favorite, I guess you would say, is the Cherokee Purple. They've not done so great this year though. I think it's just been a weird weather year for them. Um, it's just like with a lot of things around here, some things do good one year and then they may not the next, so who knows. And this has been a nice little delicious surprise this year. This is the yellow pear cherry tomato. They're super cute. I love the fun color. This thing is loaded down. That's the only one we have and it has produced like crazy. And they are delicious. I wanted to mention this area right here. So that's where we cleaned up the sweet potatoes. You can see this this spot is empty. It wasn't empty earlier today. In fact, it was a jungle and the kids cleaned it up for me. So that's where our green beans were. And if you've been following us for a while, early spring, we replanted those two or three times and they kept getting flooded out. Just one thing after another, they just weren't doing well. So one last ditch effort, we planted them and lo and behold, they came up, did well. But it's the second time I've done this in my gardening career, I guess you'd say. Planted them as late as I did this year. And by the time you plant and replant and plant and replant, 
um, that winds up putting you quite a bit behind. So I'm gonna say we were probably a month behind when we normally would have planted them and they just didn't do well. It just got super hot out here. Green beans don't necessarily prefer it to be really cool, but just in our zone, people plant them when, it, when it's still cool outside. It's one of the first things of the summer crops that you plant. Now it's not something like um, turnips or, or cabbage or anything that's cold hardy at all. But when the frost is over, that's one of the first things usually people plant. And that's when they thrive. They come on quick, you're picking green beans steadily for about three weeks, and then they're done. And then um, I've tried replanting them before, they just never do that well in the hot summer. They'll do it good again in the fall, uh, but I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about do I even wanna mess with them again this year. Uh, they're kind of labor intensive, just to be honest. They, they make your back a little sore picking them and they take time to pick them, snap them, can them, or whatever you're gonna do with them. So I don't know if I have it in me this year, just being quite honest with you. We have so much going on, uh, but there is that option, I would say, to grow them in the fall. And then there is this part of the garden. You can see we still got quite a bit going on in here. You can see we've got, these are Mississippi Cobb Gem watermelons, I'm pretty sure. Um, looking really good. We got two of those. We've still got some lemon drop watermelons. If I don't get to those, there's been so many of them. The bees love them. They've been feeding on them. This is a new to us melon from Baker Creek. And I'm gonna put the name of that on the screen as well. It has the word honey in it and that's why Ben wanted it so bad. So honestly, this is the first one I'm gonna try. So I'll keep you guys posted on if we like this or not. And I have replanted all my squashes and my winter squashes. It's a perfect time to be doing that, y'all, to replant all your stuff for the fall. I've got six packs out at the greenhouse with sprouts in it of cabbage and cauliflowers. And I plan to fill up all of these holes. You can see I stuck a couple things down in some of them that can run. But other than that, these are gonna be full of broccolis, cauliflowers, cabbages, kohlrabis. All those things that like the cool weather that hopefully is heading our way before too long. One thing I wanted to address before I hop off here is this ground cover. Uh, the fact that would I do this again? Because last year we tried to be honest with you guys and tell you we made a big mistake. We left gaps in between it and tried to plant in between pieces of this ground cover and it was a big disaster. So this year we overlapped it. It took a lot more ground cover, uh, but would we do that again? And the answer is a resounding absolutely yes, we would and we will. In fact, we might even go with wider pieces of this so it doesn't take as many runs. This is a lot more manageable width though. Uh, I have to ask Ben how wide this is. But the fact is these smaller pieces are a lot more manageable, especially if you're doing this by yourself. Um, I laid some of these with the kids, some by myself, some with Ben. So if you're doing it alone, I would definitely not go with something too wide because the wind would want to take it away from you. But um, it has been a lifesaver. It has saved so much weeding. I think the plants have thrived like the tomatoes and things that don't have to fight for nutrients with grass and things like that. There's been a little maintenance. There's grass that'll come up in little holes you put in it or whatever, but nothing compared to not having it. One last thing I wanted to say to you guys, um, I know you're like I am and you're out there just really trying to garden and grow some food, whether it's just for the season or whether you're trying to put it up and can it for your family's food, whatever the case may be. Maybe you're just growing something on a patio, whatever. whatever. Um, we're all in this together. And there's been things here on our farm and in our garden this year that flopped, to be honest with you. They didn't do well at all. Bugs ate them up or uh, just it wasn't a good year for them weather-wise or whatever the case may be. Just like the green beans. We, we literally got one canner full off of those two rows. I should have gotten bushels and bushels. But I want to encourage you, whatever's going on in your garden, don't give up it'll be better next year. That might be the thing that really thrives next year. And just the fact is, if you talk to any gardener, you're not 
usually maybe once in a lifetime gonna have a year where every single thing knocks it out of the park and thrives it just doesn't happen like that if it's a great year for say potatoes it might not be a great year for broccoli or any combination you can name it's just that's just the way it is and that's why if we could just master all of them and not even have to work at it and think about it what fun would that be anyway so i say just keep going keep planting keep growing keep eating fresh and in season because that's about the best you can get and just be encouraged that just because something failed this year doesn't mean you did anything wrong or there's anything wrong with you or you're not a good gardener just chalk it up to sometimes that happens and get out there and try again there's still plenty of time i know here in america to grow a few things so i encourage you stick some seeds in the ground if you're already getting into a cooler season grow some cool weather crops if you're up north of us uh, if you're where in our zone 7b you've got plenty of time to grow more squash all kinds of fun things that can add some real enjoyment to your dinner plate thanks for spending a little bit in the garden with me tonight and just for all your encouraging comments thank you for just everything you do to support us we'll see you guys on the next one Thanks for watching and God bless.